you know, I'll get right into it. And I'm going to just, you know, just be honest with y'all. Like, you know, truth of the matter is it's winter time and the, it seems like the weather is finally starting to break in between this this cold winter. I mean, this winter has been treacherous in the Northeast. Um, and COVID, I'm going bonkers. Like, we've been in the house forever. And all I want to do is just take a trip right now. I just want to go somewhere warm. I want. I, I just want to lay out somewhere. Just take a break. Like being in the crib between the cold weather and between COVID. We've been locked up in the crib for going on one year. Like literally almost to date, we've been in the crib for a straight year. And me being somebody who, you know, I don't necessarily look forward to all that you got to go through at the airports you know when you go to catch your flights it's you know you got to be there one hour early and in order to get there one hour early you got to leave your house two hours early and then once you get to the airport it's all these different things you know just trying to check in making sure your paperwork is straight making sure your bags are checked going through that um check-in line and taking your shoes off, all the different things they put you through just to get on that plane, you know, and that's, God forbid, you got something in your pockets when you're walking through the metal detector, you got to come back, empty out your pockets, put everything through that conveyor belt, and that's all before you actually get to your gate, and once you get to your gate, you got to pray to God that God blesses you to get to your destination safely, and I'm a person, like right now, I'm telling y'all, I'm ready to travel. I'm ready to just get out of New York for a second. But there was once upon a time when I did nothing but travel. I was on the road at least once a week for years on end. At any given time, you could catch me on planes, trains, and automobiles. And then, you know, as I was working at Bad Boy Records and I worked my way up and I got closer and closer to Puff and then got down on his management team and became the official tour manager, we was on the road for some time, six weeks, two and a half months at a time. Every time we would go out, we wouldn't be back for six weeks, two and a half months. And going out as a tour manager, you are under nothing but stress. So let me just paint the picture for y'all. Puff is no regular artist. He's an A-level artist. So when we went out on tour, we literally went out with at least 50 plus people, at least 50 of them that was traveling. And I was responsible for everybody having to know everything at every minute of the day. That was my job as tour manager. So it did not matter if you was a background dancer. It did not matter if you was a backup singer. It didn't matter if you was an artist, if you was a drummer, if you was a museum, I mean a musician. Everybody had to come to me to get their information. And it's times when we would be city to city, state to state, country to country, and I wouldn't see half of these places because I was the one who had disseminate to, to have to disseminate all of this information, make sure everybody had what they needed. So while people are on tour buses in their sleep, in their bunks, I was on the phone talking with travel agents, turning over, talking with hotels, making sure that when we checked in, all of our credentials was there at the front desk, making sure that everybody had their room keys and everybody would have to come to see me and I would just hand them out to each and every person one by one. And then on top of it, people had to know what time was lobby call, what time did we have to go to the venue to rehearse, what time was showtime, and then what time did you have to be back in the lobby the next morning to make sure when we pulled out, everybody was going with us. This is the kind of job that I had. Now, when I came into the music industry, I wasn't necessarily looking for this job, but it's a job that I, when I got it, I was happy and I never ever complained about it. I was overworked. I was underpaid. There was times I didn't know if I was coming or going because I was the last one to sleep and I was the first one awake because if, and trust me when I tell you, this is something that happens constantly. When you are on the road, people forget that it is their job. People get out there and they're talking to chicks. They're meeting different women in different towns. People are just having fun. They don't take their job as serious as you take yours. So whereas I had to worry about 50 plus people 
at one time, there were certain artists, certain managers that I had to micromanage because I know that they was going to be up up until the time that it was time to leave and finally they would go to sleep and lie and say I never got that message so I was banging on their door like look we got to be in the lobby at four in the morning this that and the third but I never ever complained because truth of the matter is this is what I signed up for when I was taking them five internships trying to get into the music industry I didn't know that one day I'd have this job but when I got it how could I complain with all of the inconveniences that came with it? My name started to ring out. Everybody knew that I was right next to the man. Everybody knew if you needed something, especially while we was out there on the road and we was on tour, you had to come through Sean Press. I signed up for it. So complaining was a moot point. It was like, yes, I'm exhausted. Yes, I'm overworked. No, I do not have enough staff to support me. And I got to worry about all of these knuckleheads doing what they do after the show. And they're not focused on the next town I had to be. It was a lot of grueling work. But the point is, I signed up for it. So what was I complaining about? And this is something that when I finally left Bad Boy and I started on my own, I didn't realize at the time, but that skill set of being able to micromanage, that skill set of knowing where 50 plus people was at one time, that skill set of high stress, dealing with a bunch of different clients at once they were all going to come into play they were all going to come in to benefit me when i started this company power moves inc because i was prepared but i didn't know it at the time that that was my setup the, all the times that things went wrong all the times that these knucklehead artists were not doing what they were supposed to do and me learning how to think with a level head me learning how to just micromanage and pay attention to the smallest detail because the devil is always in the detail the details are where most people mess up and i have just really structured my life to just focus on details 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 because that's where the success lies it always lies in the details y'all and it set me up to be successful when i went out there and i started on my own and that's when i can look and say this was is what it was all about this was the privilege it was the benefit of me just working hard keeping my head low doing what i was supposed to do knowing good and well that i was understaffed but still in all one day it was going to work out for a bigger picture and it takes me back to what i was just talking about in terms of getting on that airplane as much as i'm not looking i want to go out of town absolutely but i'm not looking forward to going to the airport because there's so many things that you have to go through before you can even get to your flight but the purpose is so that you can get to that flight and you can get to that destination safely so as y'all are going through what you're going through take a minute to just stop breathe and appreciate this journey you're on stop complaining about this process stop complaining because you asked for it you asked for it you signed up for this thing you can go out there and get a job at mcdonald's you can go out there and get a job at bed bath and beyond you can get a job that when you punch out at five o'clock the job is over nobody's calling your phone nobody's demanding nothing from you you signed up for this so what are you complaining about when you have somebody a boss who is standing over you who is making sure that you are performing at nothing less than excellence what are you doing complaining when you are out there and you're learning and you're in the game that you say that you want to be in what are you doing complaining this is something that most people do and they tap out too early and they don't realize i was closest to my destination than i realized i did boom 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 it's over i gotta get out of here and when they look back in hindsight if i had just stuck it out i was so close I was so close, but I couldn't take the pressure. I couldn't just take a minute to look at this thing for what it was. I was being prepared to be a gladiator. I was being prepared to be a warrior. And that's something like one of my favorite movies of all time is Gladiator. I love that movie and there's one scene in particular that I love. You know, the gladiator, 
his his OG gladiator Proximo told Maximus he brought him into into his office or into his room and he said glad um Maximus what is it that you want Maximus was like yo I want my freedom he said listen to me if you want your freedom win the crowd and you'll win your freedom he didn't say win a lot of money he didn't say get a lot of dead bodies he said win the crowd and you'll win your freedom and i want y'all to understand this because when i was working i was working and i was managing all of these different people on the road different states different countries day by day I was doing it for my name, for my reputation. I was winning the crowd. When people were saying, I don't know about nobody else, Puff, I don't know about any other road manager, any other tour manager you had, but that guy, Sean Prez, is on it. This guy will do whatever it takes to win. When people started to talk and say my name and put me in the same sentence as people that I admired and started to put me up on that level, that, that, um, everybody knew that I was nothing to play with in this game. That's when I won my freedom. It was financial freedom. If you are trying to win that financial freedom, you have to first win the crowd. Who is bragging about you? Who is saying that you are so great at what you do? Who is saying that you are the one? You're special. You're the one that stands out in the crowd. Is there anybody that would miss you if you left tomorrow? If there anybody who would miss you if you tapped out today? What are you bringing to the table that is so unique and so special that anybody would say, this person, I don't care what it costs, you got to keep him or you got to keep her. Is it something that you're bringing to the table? If not, you will not win the crowd and then you will not win your freedom, meaning your financial freedom. Everybody says, I want it. I want it. I want it. Okay, you want it. I hear you. But what does that really mean? Because this life thing, this success thing, being a gladiator, it is a blood sport. It is mano y mano. Are you willing to get in that pit and get dirty? Are you willing to look at the other side of that pit with your dreams? It's just you and your dreams in there and say, look, either you're going to tap out or we're both going to die in here trying to kill each other. Are you willing to do that or do you just talk about it? And I got to ask you, what are you doing this for? Because if it is just for money, trust me when I tell you the money won't come. Win the crowd. And then you'll win that financial freedom. Win people, their minds and, and their hearts over. Have people screaming your name. And then you'll win that financial freedom. But some of y'all are scared to get in that pit. And I can tell y'all for sure, no matter how hard things get, I always look at myself as a gladiator. I got one more time to go out there and get this thing right. Either. He's going to die, she going to die, or it's going to be me. And I can promise you, it ain't going to be me. I will die on that arena floor before I tap out. Are you willing to say you're willing to do the same? And you got to ask yourself, what is your motivation for this? Is it greater than you? Is it greater than your pocketbook? Are you doing it for legacy? Are you doing it for something that you'll be remembered for long after you leave this earth? Because that's the only way that that financial freedom is going to come your way. Stop complaining. Stop complaining about what you have to go through for what you say you want. I remember, you know, before I closed this thing out, I remember when I, five, six, ten years ago or something, I would go to the doctor and the doctor was telling me my health was going south. Yo, Sean, you got to change the way you eat. You got to change the way you live. You got to do something different or we're going to put you on medicine. And I didn't want to go on medicine. And at the time, my girl, I would speak to her all the time because she's a workout chick. And she knew everything about clean living and eating right. And I would remember just calling her time and time again. Can I eat this? Can I eat that? And she'd be like, no, that's terrible for you. I, can I eat a donut? I actually thought donuts was baked. She would, hell no, you can't eat no donut. They're fried. Everything that I was used to putting in my mouth, she was shooting me down. And I remember being on the phone with her, yelling and screaming and cursing and, and fighting with her about something I said I want. 
I was trying to change my life. It wasn't her. She was just giving me the information. And I'm fighting with her. But the bottom line is, it wasn't up until I stopped complaining. It wasn't up until I just had to understand that this right now is the journey that I'm on. And if I'm going to get my health better, if I'm going to change my life for the better, I have to shut my mouth, understand that that is what I'm trying to do. And this is the process to get there. What the hell am I complaining about something that I say I want? What am I complaining about if I got to lose weight and the trainer says you got to work out three times a week? Well, God damn it, do it. That's what it takes. Do it. If you got to get up and walk, you got to change the way you eat. Do it. Change your life. Change your perspective. Stop complaining about what you have to do, especially when you say that is what I want in the end. If you want it, what are you complaining for? Now I'll tone it down and I'll bring it back there. And I would just think this was just stuff that was on my mind, guys, because too often we say we want something and, and, and we put it out there to the world. This is what I want. But we complain when things get difficult. We complain when there are obstacles and bumps in the road. We complain when we don't get the recognition as fast as we thought we should get it. We complain when nobody's screaming our names because we are still young in the game. What have we done? What have you done? What have I done? Even me, I sit and I come and I do these speeches, good or bad, every Monday, but I show up. This is what I got to go through to get to the end result. I'm willing to do it. Are you? We are gladiators. We are movers. We are willing to jump down in the pit day after day, week after week, month after month, guys, and get dirty because we're gladiators. This is what we do with movers. Stay focused. I always tell y'all, movers, move. Keep moving. Keep moving. Don't be afraid to get in that pit and be a gladiator. Win the crowd and you're going to win your financial freedom. I'll leave it there, guys. Please make sure all of y'all check out this Angela Yee interview that um dropped today. Please make sure y'all turn turn tune in on Wednesday for our Warrior Wednesday. And um let's just keep building each other up, y'all. Hopefully I said something tonight that inspires you, motivates you, and just makes you want to go one more round. What makes you want to get dirty and jump in that pit just one more time. Stop worrying about if anybody's recognizing you. If anybody is seeing your work, you know the work that you're putting in. Do what you got to do. Win the crowd and you win your freedom. That financial freedom, I mean. I love y'all, and I'll see y'all all on Wednesday. Peace and love, God. Move is move, y'all. Move is move. Move is move. The work day is not over. Get out there and get busy. One.